we can all feel like we aren't getting anything done, but we never actually give ourselves permission to organize our lives. And we say yes to everything that pops into our inbox, basically. So what you need to do is, you know, you can plan your year, actually, like you have permission to do that. And if you feel like you don't, I'm giving you permission to do that right now. Hey, Hatchlings, welcome to the Motion Hatch podcast. I'm your host, Hayley Akins. Hey Hatching, so we've got a solo episode for you today. It's just me and you. So it's kind of strange for me because I'm sitting here sort of talking to myself really, but I like to do these episodes now and again because I feel like, you know, I get to tell you about some of the things that I've been doing and hopefully help you with some of the things that you're doing too. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about goals and we're getting towards the end of this year. Maybe you feel like you haven't achieved everything that you wanted to. You might be confused about what the next step is that you want to take in your career and maybe things haven't gone really to plan or you're not sure like what to do next. So a lot of us feel overwhelmed and exhausted. You might have like the fear of missing out. Everyone seems to be doing everything all the time. Everyone's posting to Instagram. They're making great work you can't seem to do that and you can't seem to find the time. And, you know, I have these feelings all the time, probably every other day where I'm like, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. What am I supposed to be doing? Especially now, since, you know, I work at home in my home office, I kind of feel like a bit more like I have to get out of the house sometimes, otherwise I'm going to go stir crazy and, and talk to people. And I feel like having meetings with people, even if it's just online through a video chat can help sometimes too. But I wanted to just distill my tips for you for kind of how you can get your, the stuff that you want to do going in like maybe the end of this year or like 2020 and make it really good and not just make these goals that we have in January every year. And then by the time May comes around, you've kind of forgotten all about them. So I've got a couple of strategies on this podcast episode that I hope will help you push forward and make your 2020 pretty awesome. So you shouldn't wait until January and make New Year's resolutions that you're just going to give up by February, really. I think what we need to do is really start thinking about this stuff now and putting in a plan. So this is what I hope to tell you about today. I've kind of got like three tips for you, but I want to tell you a story first about what happened to me this year. And I kind of feel like this sort of starts off as a likely story and then it kind of ends up with me doing something that I never thought I would. So I hope, you know, carry on listening and remember that <laughs> this is a podcast about motion design. Um, I'm just using this as an example of, of something that I've kind of achieved in and what it's taught me about this year, really. So I want to go back to episode 28 of the podcast. So if you listen to that, you can hear me chat to Joe Donaldson about his passion for running. And I think that I was saying at the time, like, oh, I'll never be a runner. I just didn't identify myself in that way, really. And Joe kind of planted a seed in my mind that day. And I, I'm really grateful to him. So if you're listening, Joe, thank you for this, because I, I feel like this has really helped me actually this year. He basically said like, oh, I do lots of running. I really enjoy it and stuff like that. And and that kind of made me think, I don't really feel like a runner. I, it's not something that I want to do. But then when it came to January and my friend actually asked me if I wanted to come running with her, you know, it actually made me think, hey, maybe I'll I'll give this a little try. So I started running in a with a group. It was like a little running club, but it wasn't very like a strict serious one. You know, they would just do sort of 5K, something like that. After about five minutes, you know, I felt exhausted. I couldn't keep up. And most people, I think you would give up. You know, I thought I would give up, but I knew that I kind of like needed this accountability to keep going really and I kind of enjoyed the social aspect of it as well which is really important when we're you know working at home all day we need to get out of the house you know and running is like the perfect thing really I promise you this is not a podcast about running and and just you know bear with me because there are definitely some lessons here but I remember that my uncle was telling me about an app called Couch to 5k which was really good so I thought okay well so I can't keep up with this group. What else is going to keep me accountable? So I downloaded the app and I made a plan. And my plan was that I would run three times a week and I would just turn the app on and I would do what it said. So kind of bringing that bar pretty low, like making it easy for myself, right? 
So I also roped in my boyfriend to start running with me and told my friend about my plan as well. So I feel like this did two things for me. I mean, the app provided me with a long-term goal, but broke it up into small actionable steps that were fairly easy for me to do. And then the long goal was like, you know, to run a 5K in, in one go. By splitting it up into small steps every week and building up, you know, from running and walking to running solidly, I was able to make it a bit easier for myself. I think that when people start running, what they do is they just run and run and run and then they kind of exhaust themselves and they think, oh, I can't do this. Where I actually need to just have like these small little goals every week. And I think that we can do this in our motion design careers too. After this, it kind of seemed easier to keep running. And I kind of convinced myself to do a half marathon in September after a couple of months of running. So it's probably like in February or something that you have to apply. And I wasn't even running like 5K back then. And I knew that I needed like a big goal to strive for really to continue running because otherwise I wouldn't. I, I probably would have given up halfway through the year. But I was like, well, now you've signed up for this half marathon which happens to be the biggest half marathon in the world, like you've kind of got to do it, right? So now it's October, 10 months later, I've completed my first half marathon and now I would consider myself a runner. I'm not a very fast runner, but I am a runner. So I kind of wanted to tell you this story because I feel like I learned a lot of lessons in, you know, doing this in training, you know, and becoming more of a runner and kind of a lot of it is to do with changing your mindset. But there's also some key things in here in this story that I did that helped me to continue after January with running as a regular thing. So basically, many people start exercising in January, but don't keep up. And we all know that because I built a solid plan that wasn't just run for as long as you can until you get tired. And I had weekly goals, which were small enough and seemed manageable enough with a big end goal that was high enough to keep my attention. I think that this is what really helped me. And I also built in accountability into my goals, which is a pretty important thing to do to get things done. So you can do this for your motion design career too, which is really, really exciting. I mean, if you want to do it for running as well, like totally go for it. Like maybe we can all start a motion design run club. This is going to happen one day, I'm sure. But you know, you need to turn your to-do list into priorities based on what will move your career and your business forward forward so first you need to make sure that you're moving in the right direction which I think a lot of you probably heard me talk about this quite a lot but what really helped me with this is an exercise called the perfect day exercise it really like changed my life because it made me think about how can I align my you know my goals with my values and what I want to do in my life and think of my business as like part of my life rather than something separate that I just do for work. So, you know, when I started in motion design, I was kind of felt like I was headed in a direction that I thought I should go in, but I didn't actually want to. So that feeling where you're like, oh, I should be an art director. I should have my own studio and all of those kind of things. And like, maybe you do want to do that and maybe you'd be great and that is right for you. But that didn't align with what I wanted to do personally in my life, which was do more traveling, work more remotely and you know help people with their careers and stuff like that so this really helped me just kind of distill what I wanted to do and then you can build out from that so you can download this whole exercise we'll have it for you in the show notes of this episode so if you go to motionhatch.com forward slash 52 you can find the exercises there so lots of people think that they want to run a studio and it might seem like the natural progression from being a freelancer when you make a studio, you need someone that will actually bring the business in, who will get on the sales calls with clients and do pitches. And do you want to be that person? So many people think that they want to build their own studio, but they don't think about all the other things that come along with that. They don't think about all the things that come along with building a business. So you might want to be the maker and not the person who's actually bringing in the business, which is okay, but you need to know these things so you can point yourself in the right direction. If you want to know more about this particular scenario and kind of, you know, whether you're the maker or you want to be the person who brings in the business and that kind of thing, I recommend reading a book called The E-Myth by Michael E. Gerber. So if you check that out, it goes into this point more deeply. And my point is that sometimes we take ourselves in particular directions, but the results of our actions aren't actually the results that we wanted. So maybe we didn't want to build a studio after all. We want to spend more time with our families and keep making the art that we love. That's a very different business to the business that you would build if you wanted to do a studio. And we need to kind of realize what's important to us and align our values with our goals. 
The perfect day exercise helps you to do this. So what you do is you can imagine three years from now, it's just a normal Tuesday and you answer the following questions. You kind of need to think about this for a long time. So I recommend like sitting for a couple of hours somewhere, really like brainstorming your answers. So the questions are, you need to think about your perfect day in three years time and you think about where would you live? What would your house be like? What would you do in the morning? What would you do for personal fulfillment? What would your business be? So it's really important to consider these questions seriously. And, you know, like I said, sit down for a couple of hours and really take your time over this. You do the perfect day exercise so you can figure out if you're going in the right direction. But how do you go from those like three year goals like perfect day goals to what you need to do to get there. What you do in the exercise is then you break it down working backwards. So your the next questions are, what do you need to be doing in one year's time to get to your perfect day? What do you need to do in six months time to get to your perfect day? And what do you need to do in one month's time to get to your perfect day? So like I said, I'm just kind of giving you an overview of the exercise here, but if you go to the show notes page for this episode, you'll be able to find the download of this exercise there. If you go to motionhatch.com forward slash 52, you can get it there and you can do this exercise and hopefully it might reveal something to you that you didn't realize, like some direction that you actually want to go in your career with, or it might affirm that you actually do want to do these things that you think you want to do but you have to kind of think of your whole life and career and your business as one thing and not just something where you feel like oh I'm just going to work and this is what motion designers do and this is the next step because that's what seems like everybody else is doing I don't think we should do that I think we should think a little bit about our lives and what we want our lives to look like to help build your business around that. So now you kind of have these long-term goals if you do the exercise, but since they're focused around not just your business, but your life, sometimes you have to tackle them like one at a time and not get distracted by the next shiny object. I'm sure we've all had that shiny object syndrome. I know that I get it all the time and I kind of distract myself in many different directions and then you never get anything done. Sometimes it's necessary to have certain goals at certain times of your life. So for example, if you wanna buy a house, you might take on some extra projects to bring in some extra cash. But another time you might want to be focusing on improving your skills and your reel. This is why I would suggest working in seasons or quarters. And I've been doing this. I think that we first brought this up on the Motion Hatch podcast with Austin Saylor. Basically what you do is each quarter or season, you would have a focus. So maybe in Q1, works a little slower, you might focus on developing your skills and making personal projects. So you might allocate some time off for yourself when you know you won't be busy with client work. And this really helps because we can all feel like we aren't getting anything done, but we never actually give ourselves permission to organize our lives. And we say yes to everything that pops into our inbox, basically. So what you need to do is, you know, you can plan your year, actually, like you have permission to do that. And if you feel like you don't, I'm, I'm giving you permission to do that right now. So take it from me, like do this, like organize your life. If you're freelance, like if you're working in a job, it can be a little bit harder because obviously you have that nine to five time blocked out, but you still have time in your day to do things that you want to work on. So you can still use these strategies for like working before or after work or deciding what you want to do before and after work too. You might have six months where you're saving really hard because you want to buy a house and that's okay too. In that time, you wouldn't want to let yourself be distracted by the personal projects and focus on reaching out to new and existing clients. So once you've kind of figured out what you want to do on the long term and then you've kind of built these long term goals into seasons or quarters based on whatever you think. So it might be like, oh, for a summer, I'm going to work really hard because I know that I want to buy a house and that's coming up. Or it could be like, hey, you know what, I'm going to take the summer off to go traveling because that's what I haven't never done in my life. And I've been saving up all this money because I've been working really hard. And, you know, that's okay too. You can totally do that. One of the ways that I want to test these goals that I make for myself, the long-term goals and these kind of short quarterly goals is actually like making them into smaller goals and testing them against this system called SMART, which this isn't like a new thing. I haven't made it up. You can find out about it on the internet and everything, but this is what I use sometimes because I feel like it's pretty useful to test your goals against to make sure that you can actually achieve them. SMART stands for specific, which is what do you want to achieve when, where, and how. Measurable, how will you know when your goal is accomplished. Attainable, how realistic is the goal. 
relevant? Is it relevant to you? And why do you want to reach this goal? And time bound, does it have a target date or deadline? So say you're trying to update your show reel, um, you need to know like, when are you going to do it basically? Like, when are you going to do the work to update the show reel? Because you can't just say like, oh, hey, I'm going to update my show reel. And then you just never do it, right? Because the client work gets in the way and all this stuff. But what about if you say, I'm going to work on my show reel for like one hour a day? You're making it really specific. You're helping yourself to know like when you're going to achieve this and like how because you're giving yourself a little time slot to do it. And in terms of measurable, like how do we know when it's accomplished? Well, you can say like, hey, I'm going to complete my show reel by Christmas. Attainable, this sounds pretty realistic to me and relevant. Like, of course, it's relevant to you because you want to do your show reel to get new clients. And time bound is, does it have a target date or deadline? Well, if you say... I'm going to work on my show reel one hour every day in the evenings and I'm going to get it done by Christmas. Then, you know, you've got a pretty good goal there. Instead of just having like on your list, I'm going to do my show reel, you've kind of specified when you're going to do it. And it's a bit more of a smarter goal than if you hadn't kind of tested it against this smart system. So you can download the workbook at motionhatch.com forward slash 52. I really encourage you to go there and download the workbook to help you better identify goals for yourself and make sure that you can achieve everything that you want to do like for the rest of the year and in 2020. The next thing that I, you know, did when I was doing my running and what I do quite regularly, that's so, so important is like finding accountability This is actually the biggest thing. If you didn't do anything else and you just had random goals, but you told someone else about them, like the percentage of you actually achieving those goals goes up so much than if you don't tell anyone about them, you know, because you can kind of talk yourself out of these things like, oh, I said I was going to do this thing, but now I'm not going to, I'm too busy, there's other stuff. And it's just so like unbelievable how we can do this to ourselves. I've done it all the time. If I haven't got accountability for something, I think I just don't get it done. I need to have people holding me accountable for stuff. So there's two ways you can do this. The first way is to find an accountability partner, which is what I did with my running. You know, I had my boyfriend and also my friend who is a runner to kind of hold me accountable going out every week and keeping it going because they would have said, hey, Haley, you said you were going to do this running. You're not doing it. And also having that big half marathon goal really, really helped too. So you need to find a person that will hold you accountable and make sure that you're doing the things that you say you're going to do, which sometimes this is really great, but can be difficult especially if it's a friend or your actual partner that you live with because sometimes we can kind of brush them off a bit and be like we know they're not really gonna like tell us off or anything (laughs) not that I'm telling you that you should find people to tell you off but you know what I mean like we can be like oh yeah and make all these excuses or they're like pretty busy and that they find it hard to um, keep up with what you're doing. So the ways around this could be that you could find an accountability partner where you both hold each other accountable. And that's a bit better because obviously they have goals that they want to achieve and you have goals that you want to achieve too. I mean, this could be like another motion designer or, or a colleague or something like that. So one of the best ways that I found to get accountability for my goals is to be part of a mastermind group. You might have heard me talk about our MoGraph mastermind program before. And I made this program because masterminds have really helped me build a business that I love. And I really wouldn't be doing this podcast right now if it wasn't for the masterminds that I've been in. So maybe you're thinking, okay, yeah, but what is it? Well, mastermind groups are peer groups that support each other and learn and grow together. Often there is a facilitator and in our case, we have mentors that help you by offering you advice as well as facilitating the groups. Usually you meet weekly or monthly on video calls and discuss challenges and problems you might have in your business or career. And the group helps you by giving you a place to bounce ideas off. So masterminds are based around a hot seat format. It might sound more scary than it is, but when you're in the hot seat, it's your turn to discuss the things that you need help with. So everyone in the group listens and provides their perspective. And it's really helpful to get an outside view on your work, career or your business. Since our mastermind group is especially for motion designers, we also share knowledge and experiences in the group. It can really help when you're trying to go freelance or build up your client base or grow your motion design business. So I find that it's really, really great for accountability and for all the times that you kind of feel stuck and you don't know what to do next. And in our mastermind program, we also help you set weekly actionable goals based on your larger career goals as well. So we can help you to make progress quickly. I highly recommend joining a mastermind group. 
If you'd like to join our MoGraph Mastermind program in January, we're open applications on the 4th of November until the 15th. And I would love to have you in the group. So do head over to motionhatch.com forward slash mastermind to apply. If you're listening to this podcast after the 15th of November, applications will be closed, but you can head to the site and sign up for the waitlist to hear about the next session. These are my three tips to achieve your goals and kick off your 2020 with a bang. Firstly, we had the perfect day exercise, which you can go to our website, go to the show notes, motionhatch.com forward slash 52 and find the workbook there. And then secondly, we had the smart goals. Are your goals smart? Are they specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound? So you can find both of those exercises on the website, like I said, at motionhatch.com forward slash 52. They'll be in the show notes there for you. And then the final way is, you know, either find an accountability partner or a mastermind group. I feel like these are really great ways to hold you accountable. And if you're anything like me, accountability is pretty important to help you get things done. I hope you've enjoyed this solo episode. Let me know what you think of it. If you would like me to do more solo episodes like this one, I'd love to hear from you. You can always contact me. We're at Motion Hatch on Twitter and Instagram or send me an email, hello at motionhatch.com. If you like this podcast and it really helps you, then please do leave us a rating review wherever you get your podcasts. It does really help get the podcast out there and I really appreciate it and it helps me make more episodes like this one. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. I appreciate you. See ya.